Well, good evening, everybody. <laughs> Pleasure to be here in Benin. It's been a while since I was here. It was 2004, I think, the last time I was here. So, so it's yeah, been a, a while. I, I spoke there for uh, uh, Colonge and uh, uh, you know, the different uh, students and so forth. Could you guys display the, the screen? <laughs> so, um, uh, one second here. Um, things have been quite busy. Uh, so far this year, I've been like to 23 countries, I believe. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, cl closing the, the year, isn't it? Uh, uh, trying to, to cover as much uh, ground as possible. And I'm coming from Pennsylvania, the land of uh, Hershey chocolate. <laughs> Hershey is about uh, 45 minutes uh, for, from where we, we live. Uh, the town is called Hamburg, Pennsylvania. The reason why it's called Hamburg is because there's a great number of uh, uh, Germans in that area. Uh, if you ever heard the term, it's called the, the Pennsylvanian Dutch. Can you put them my F5? And, or, and, um, and, um, these uh, Germans are, uh, 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 they, they call that area the, the Pennsylvanian Dutch. But not because they're Dutch from Holland, the Netherlands, but rather because of the Deutsch, you know, Pennsylvanian uh, Deutsch. And um, what you guys need to do, uh, go to view and slideshow and then select the right screen then you'll, you'll, you'll be able to, to select it because you're, you're displaying somewhere else. And um, another thing that that, that, um, that, that that area is famous is for the Appalachian Trail. I don't know if you ever guys heard about that place, that trail. It's a, a trail, if you see in the map of America, you have Florida in the very bottom. The next state to the top, that's called Georgia, and there's a trail, a walking trail, from Georgia all the way to Maine. Okay. Maine is all the way on the corner there, border with Canada. So you don't walk that, you know, one week or something like that. I mean, this thing takes like four or uh, five months to, to do that. So that trail passes uh, from where we are. In fact, they say it's one of the most... Uh, uh, beautiful uh, parts of that that trail. So usually uh, people start, you know, early in the in the year, and and they just go. You know, you need to be sleeping as you're going until you get to the very top there of uh, of, of Maine. You know, so that's quite the the the, the task to do that. Not not everybody is able to to to, to do that task. And um, uh, there, I am director of uh, an institution called HealthWise uh, Lifestyle Medicine, which serves as uh, health ministries for the conference, but uh, we do much more than that. Uh, we are uh, creating materials. I was going to show you, you know, a little bit of uh, the, the type of uh, materials that, 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 that we create. We have some in French, actually, and um, also uh, we create different uh, modalities to meet the needs of the communities uh, we're working right now to run uh, mobile uh, clinics and and so forth for the for the community so i think you have it yep i think you have it so this is uh, one of my latest uh, papers uh, i do a lot of research uh, in this paper we were documenting how hydrotherapy is one of the best uh, ways to activate your immune system. And uh, that uh, uh, hydrotherapy is the wise application of uh, hot and cold. And uh, hydrotherapy uh, has been documented how beneficial it is uh, for COVID-19. For example, uh, what do the people in Finland do that is something very cultural for Finland? Anybody knows? Sauna. In fact, the word sauna is a Finnish word. Okay. And if you check the statistics regarding COVID-19, here's the statistics. 
75% of the people that died of COVID-19 in Finland were foreigners living in Finland. See, the foreigners don't do the sauna as religiously as the Finnish people do. Finnish people, they have to go to that sauna, you know, uh, at least twice a week, you know. Well, the foreigners, if you're living there as a foreigner, once in a while you may go there to the sauna because everybody goes to the sauna, but, but it's not that routinary and, and so forth, so you don't have, you know, that, that, that protection that hydrotherapy can potentially give you. So what happens is that when you apply uh, heat interventions, you activate your immune system, okay? And uh, all the science is there in that paper. Uh, I'll tell you in a minute uh, where you can uh, uh, get the, the full paper if you're interested in, 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 in reading it. And then uh, we did a second part. That this is the theoretical paper in which we were, you know, documenting the, the science part of it. And then we had a clinical part. So we had uh, patients that were positive for COVID-19, and uh, we applied different uh, hydrotherapy interventions. And it was very interesting, the, 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 the response, you know. None of them complicated. Uh, none of them uh, end up with, you know, severe type of coronavirus. And uh, their recovery actually was quite uh, fast as a result of applying, you know, those, th th those hydrotherapy interventions. This is something that every, every house should have knowledge of this, you know, because hydrotherapy is something powerful. In fact, in the old days, uh, people used to go to La Ligne to receive hydrotherapy treatments. You know, those are the type of uh, interventions that were used uh, very, very commonly. And um, I wrote a book uh, called Pandemic Busters. So Pandemic Busters uh, is a book that is being translated into nine languages, including French. The whole book is available in, in French, and uh, you can find it on uh, Amazon. That's where you can find this, uh, this book. And uh, this uh, book talks about 22 things that you need to be applying in your life in order to have, you know, optimum immunity. So we're talking about there the importance of sleep. We talk about the control of your thinking. We talk about the, you know, the science behind spending time in nature. We talked about why it's important to dress properly. We talk about there about um, friendships. We talk about there about the power of happiness. And companionship, you know, when those things are missing, the, the, the health of the person uh, goes down. And um, uh, uh, diet and exercise and all these good interventions. And the way this book is written is not just text, but rather think like an infographic the whole way. So it's nice and attractive, uh, colorful, with uh, lots of uh, illustrations. And then uh, one of the latest projects that we were doing, uh, we were uh, making some children's books. You know? So uh, today we have the, the marketing departments of uh, the food corporations like Nestlé here from Switzerland, <laughs> trying to convince uh, children uh, to eat these ultra-processed foods which are not good for them. And that's why, you know, we're seeing these rates of, uh, you know, uh, obesity and, and metabolic problems among uh, young people. So we need some good material to educate these children in, you know, the, 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 the right habits. So we have the, the first book uh, was called, I Have the Flu, What Should I Do? And it talks about, you know, th those good things that children need to be doing to have a good immunity. And then uh, we just finished the second one that is called, I'm Feeling Blue, What Should I Do? So it talks about, 
the importance of uh, mental health for children, especially as you're aware, during the, 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 the COVID-19 and the lockdowns and so forth, children not going to school, you know, the mental health of many children started to uh, worsen. So this is a very relevant topic for today that we need to understand. And this is something I did when I went to, um, to Finland. We did a hole there on the, on the ice, turn on the sauna, and bam, you know, went there to the, to the ice. For the Finnish people, this is the definition of something fun. Okay. <laughs> they love to do this. They've been doing this for a long time. So, um, if not, just leave it, I guess, uh, halfway. Yeah, okay, there it is. Yeah, because it looks like we're a little bit uh, slow there. So, why does hydrotherapy work? You can see here in this study. So, hydrotherapy works because of the following. This is from a published paper. Then the bottom, you can see the, the, cent the Celsius uh, temperature. There's something called the interference, okay? So the interference interfere with bacteria and viruses. Learn that, okay? So when the interference are high, the bacteria and the viruses have a hard time infecting you. Notice what happens when you increase your body temperature. When the body temperature reaches the 39 Celsius, notice how interference explodes in the body. Is that good or bad? Good. That's how you want to have. You want to have those interference nice and high. That's part of it. It's multiple things, but that's part of the things that improve your immunity. Here's where we were doing our our hole there in the, in the ice in Finland earlier this, this year, and boom, you know, not only that, you count to three, one, two, and three, and boom, <laughs> and you can see the ice, look at how thick the ice was, you know, I'm telling you, it was quite the task to remove those blocks of ice from there. So, uh, this is the book in, in French, uh, let me try it, La Pandemie is uh, Adversaires, something like that, isn't it? <laughs> And, um, and there's the, the English uh, version there. Uh, it's available in Chinese, it's available in Finnish, it's available in Swahili, it's available in Spanish, and many, many other languages. And this is the way that it is written. It, it is written like an infographic the whole way. This is the one about the, the, the children's, I have the flu, what should I do? So the book is nice and attractive. And this is the one for uh, mental health. I'm feeling blue, what should I do? So if you wanna download some of the chapters for free, uh, here, go to this website, healthwise.store, the French chapters also you can download for free there. In fact, in multiple languages that you can download those chapters uh, for free. So just notice wise is W, H-Y-S, healthwise.store. And then once you get there, go to the menu where it says there, free downloads. And that's how you can download them. So you can choose there the, the English, the French, the Italian, the Portuguese, Spanish, many possible languages. And just download a few of the chapters uh, for free. And let me give you this information from the beginning. My research is found in the very top link uh, just Google Francisco Ramirez Research Gate, okay? That's where you're going to find um, all my research that I do. There's more than 170 published research uh, studies in the scientific literature that, that I have helped with. Uh, and then there's a Twitter account, EddieRDMD. And there's a YouTube page there with multiple uh, videos. And if you want to come and travel with me around the world, there's that Instagram page there. You know, so if you want to see what I am seeing around the, the world. So uh, things that I put on my Twitter account. Look at this interesting study. 
Living next to green spaces has multiple benefits for your health. Instead of living, you know, between buildings and, and so forth. This other one, uh, how during deep sleep, that's when you're getting the most benefit regarding your mental health. That's when the toxins are being removed from your brain. That's why we need to have those proper habits to have that deep type of sleep. Look at this one, fascinating study. How exercise makes you more happy than money. <laughs> Some people are killing themselves, overworking because they want to make a lot of money. <laughs> Well, it would be better to buy yourself some better, some good, comfortable shoes, you know, and, and do some exercise. That will be better for your mental health. And this other one about chronic inflammation. Today we're going to be learning about chronic inflammation and its effects on the mind. So let's get busy here with the topic of tonight, and that is called the topic of inflammation. There's a geographical pattern of disease. There are places on earth where we find a lot of disease. There's places on earth where disease rates are present but much lower. And the same pattern holds true not only for cancer, but for obesity, for diabetes, and so forth. Let's put numbers to it. Compare the amount of prostate cancer in America versus Bangladesh. How is that difference? Just a tiny little difference? Humongous the difference between one and another. Notice this interesting study. This is uh, 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 checking breast cancer on the immigrants that move from Japan to industrialized countries like America. So, Notice where the red is on the leftmost uh, part of the graphic. That is how much breast cancer the first generation had. It's still some present, but very, very small. Now, the line next to it, the one in a little bit of orange, dark orange, that one is the daughters of the first generation. What happened to it? It more than doubled, do you see? And then the other one is the daughter of the daughter of the daughter. Okay. And the other one is the daughter of the daughter of the daughter. What's happening with the rates of cancer? Are they going down or up? As the person start to absorb the Western lifestyle, you start seeing the change in disease pattern. And you find this phenomena very clearly here in Geneva. Here you find multiple foreigners moving here, leaving their old habits, starting to acquire those new habits, and trouble comes as a result of that. So, we need to understand the concept of inflammation. Inflammation is one of the most important topics because most diseases come as a result of inflammation. Okay? So, if you don't deal with inflammation, inflammation is going to destroy your body. So, here is how the process starts. Every cell has something that is called arachidonic acid inside of it. When I pop the cell, this releases arachidonic acid, and then the arachidonic acid starts the cascade of inflammation. In other words, if you burn yourself, you're going to break some cells. If you twist your ankle, you're going to break some cells. If you get hit by something, you're going to break some cells. Anything that breaks the cells of your body releases the arachidonic acid and starts the cascade of inflammation. If you don't believe me, go home and do your homework. This is going to be your homework for those that don't believe me. Go home, go in front of a wall, and then take your shoe off and kick the wall with all your strength. Boom! What are you going to see as a result of that? <laughs> inflammation. 
there's four cardinal symptoms of inflammation which are redness which are swelling which are warmness does it get warm or not yes and then you have the loss of function of the organ in the Latin uh, physician Cornelius Celsus in the first century, he documented inflammation by the words calor, heat, dolor, pain, rubor, redness, swelling, tumor. So, a very wise physician from Germany, Dr. Bercho, started putting the two by two together. He realized that most of the disease that he was seeing as a doctor, the origin of this, and here's the key word, was chronic inflammation, long-term inflammation. So dementia, it happens because there's chronic inflammation for long-term. Osteoarthritis, doesn't happen because of bad luck, it happens because of chronic inflammation long term. Problems also with your heart, like atherosclerosis, the origin of that is chronic inflammation. So, anything that creates that chronic inflammation, it's going to give as a result disease okay now the biggest biggest problem with chronic inflammation and here it is is that it doesn't give you symptoms other than maybe feeling a little bit more tired than usual other than a little bit cloudiness in your head you don't have symptoms so you may have that chronic inflammation in your body and you don't realize that is literally destroying your health unless you stop that chronic inflammation. So that's why I tell my patients, if you want to be healthy, one of the most important concepts that you need to understand is the concept of chronic inflammation because I'm telling you if you don't stop it very soon chronic inflammation is gonna end up destroying your body I guarantee you therefore we need to be wise with our choices so as we're gonna be learning today you will see that the choices that we are taking are actually triggering most of the chronic inflammation that we see. So the most common sources of chronic inflammation, we have things like sunlight. Okay, Sunlight will actually, uh, excess sunlight can trigger chronic inflammation. Sunlight is great. Sunlight, you need some sunlight, you know, some vitamin D and, 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 and so forth. But too much sunlight gives chronic inflammation. Also, you have things like alcohol. Any form of alcohol triggers inflammation. It is not wise to drink any form of alcohol. Even mouthwash, some mouthwash have small amounts of alcohol that's enough we know very well from the scientific literature to increase your risk for mouth cancer you shouldn't use mouthwash okay uh, if you want to use something like that uh, green tea don't drink it just put it in your mouth and spit it out that has been published in the scientific literature to help decrease the you know bacteria population in your in your mouth also, another thing that, uh, uh, that is commonly cause of uh, uh, chronic inflammation is cigarette smoking. You know, 
Cigarette smoking is very inflammatory, not the best thing to put in your body. And uh, uh, finally, you have things such as obesity. Excess body weight can also trigger chronic inflammation. But then there's something fascinating. We cannot measure everybody with the same measurement. If you are Latino origin, if you are American Indian origin, if you are Aboriginal from Australia or New Zealand, if you are Pacific Islander, if you are from African origin, if you are from Indian origin, any of this, the rate by which chronic inflammation is going to be triggered by excess body weight is different than others. This subgroup of, of ethnicities that I just mentioned to you, just a little bit of excess body weight is disaster metabolically speaking. The blood sugar is going to start going up. The blood pressure is going to start going up. And all these different markers are going to go out of whack because we genetically are very vulnerable to excess body weight. Southeast Asian also, in parentheses, that also applies to that. So many times in uh, doctor's offices, they use this body mass index. And uh, the one that we need to use for uh, you know, other ethnicities and the one that we need to use for these minorities is different. Somebody uh, from these ethnicities, their goal should be a body mass index of 23 and less. Well, the other ethnicities are able to handle up to 25. Okay? So it's interesting that you know, your uh, genetics and so forth uh, plays a role. This is something that is called personalized medicine. Not all of us are the same. So you have to you know, customize the, the treatment based on the different ethnicities. And another thing that causes a chronic inflammation, and that's a big problem here in Switzerland, is the consumption of any form of animal products. See, animal products are very high naturally of, guess what? Arachidonic acid. So you don't necessarily need to cut yourself. You don't necessarily need to twist your ankle. You don't necessarily need to injure your tissues by eating arachidonic acid. You can start the process of inflammation. Have you ever heard that we doctors use a lot the word, the ending itis? The doctor is going to tell you, oh, you have colitis, oh, you have pneumonitis, you have hepatitis. Itis means inflammation. And if you don't solve that itis, that itis will continue to change your cells and you can end up with a severe disease like cancer. So before somebody had cancer, they had a certain form of itis that was not solved, and that's what ended up with the cancer. That's why it's so important, this concept of chronic inflammation. So chronic inflammation was there for a long time before the cancer appeared. Any viral infections cause inflammation. For example, COVID-19, who end up in the hospital if they catch this bug? People that already had chronic inflammation. The fact that COVID causes inflammation, let's do the mathematics. Inflammation plus inflammation equals what? even more inflammation. 
Those were the people that end up in the hospital. Their levels of inflammation were tremendously high. The body couldn't function properly as a result of that. Check this book that I have at home. Inflammation is caused by the way you live, and that's what causes chronic disease. And what type of link is there? Anybody? Silent link. You don't realize you have it in most of the cases. In fact, Time Magazine calls it the secret killer. The fires inside of you that destroy me. So, it's like uh, this uh, fireplace, you know. The fireplace um, has the fire inside there. You need some level of, of inflammation in your body just to function. But when the inflammation goes out of control, what's the result? Disaster is the control of that. So as we mentioned, these are some of the triggers of inflammation. And notice here, what things are triggering cancer? Tobacco, diet, obesity, infections. And you can see here, even stress can cause inflammation. You need to control your levels of stress because that's what's going to end up with inflammation. This is my study. And in this study, we're documenting how commonly used modalities like Eastern meditation, they're almost similar to placebo. They're no good in controlling uh, stress. Rather, prayer and Bible study, much better interventions to deal with your levels of stress. So, obese people, just by the fact that you have excess body weight, your body is going to be in a state of inflammation. Especially this body, belly fat, is the dangerous one. Obesity can increase the risk of all these different cancers. And now you know why. The answer starts with an I. Why is that? Because of what? Inflammation. That excess inflammation will change the cells and trigger cancer. So, this is uh, our, my patient, and uh, you can see there, our patient there from the Lifestyle Center. This is uh, this, uh, a study I published. Patient with diabetes, patient with high blood pressure, patient with 173 kilograms of weight, and taking three medications. In a matter of 18 days, by doing exercise, going to bed early, prayer, plant-based diet, stress management, and all those good interventions, this patient was able to lose um, seven kilos. Blood pressure came down to normal pressure level, 112 or 72. We had to stop his blood pressure medication. And diabetes, his fasting glucose came down to normal levels. We had to stop his diabetes medication. Now, the patient didn't say, I got well, I'm going to go back to my hamburgers and so forth. No, he learned his lesson very well. And from now on, he continued living that non-inflammatory lifestyle. Look at this. After 11 months, blood pressure, perfect. Cholesterol, 3.6. Beautiful. That's the way I want to see your cholesterol. Bad cholesterol, LDL, 1.5. Wonderful. That's the way I want to see that cholesterol. And hemoglobin A1C of 5.5, it means he is no longer diabetic. His diabetes reverse. Now, this is not something that I say, oh, I've seen this every 30 years, I've seen this case. No, <laughs> I've been for 30 years working in these lifestyle centers, and you see this over and over and over as you deal with the root cause of the problem. So, you can see here, after losing 64 kilograms in a year and a half, no longer diabetic, no longer hypertensive, and no longer a diabetic. So, you can see a nice summary here. Alcohol causes inflammation. 
Radiation causes inflammation. Stress causes inflammation. Cigarette smoking causes inflammation. Viruses causes inflammation. The way you cook food causes inflammation also. There's some people that say this. My very childhood memory is my back not hurting. <laughs> you know, people today in their 30s, their 40s, they're going to start having this chronic back pain and so forth. Reason why? Inflammation. Inflammation because of your habits is going to cause atherosclerosis. And that atherosclerosis in the arteries of your back and that harming your nerves. So we can avoid a lot of those back pains by dealing with inflammation. And uh, this inflammation can trigger all kinds of things because inflammation is connected with multiple things in the body. Coffee, very inflammatory, a horrible habit. We know that the risk for bladder cancer increases as you drink. The more coffee you drink, the higher your risk of bladder cancer because coffee causes inflammation. In fact, caffeine is a co-carcinogen. And it's not only bladder cancer, but you increase the risk of kidney cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, pancreas cancer, ovary cancer. Why would you want to increase your risk of cancer? And the thing is that in lifestyle medicine, there's a very simple principle. If something is addictive, it's not good for you. I never seen somebody addicted to broccoli <laughs> because broccoli is not addictive. Broccoli is good for you, you know, but sugar is addictive. You know, there's people need to be eating, you know, their sugar when they don't need it. You know, you start having these uh, symptoms and, and so forth. And also watch out, don't drink beverages that are too hot because it increases risk of esophageal cancer. This is from Harvard University. Look at this. They have it there. How foods like tomatoes, fruits, nuts, olives, leafy greens decrease inflammation while fried foods, sodas, refined carbs, lard, processed meats, all those things increase the risk of inflammation. Among other things that increase inflammation, not sleeping enough, not sleeping less than six hours a, a night increases your risk of inflammation. Sugar-loaded sodas increase inflammation. Sitting down for too long increases inflammation. Eating trans fats increase inflammation. Gingivitis, inflammation of your gums, increase inflammation. So, this is a fascinating study. In this study, they gave people the following breakfast, which consisted of white bread, which is inflammatory, um, egg, which is inflammatory, um, processed meat, which is inflammatory, that uh, sausage, and fried potatoes. In a matter of minutes, the people that ate that breakfast inflammation went through the roof. Compared to another group that was just fasting for comparison's sake, no inflammation whatsoever. So, if you're going to eat that stuff once a year, it's not that big of a deal. Inflammation is going to go up, and after a few days, it's going to come down. But think about it. Inflammatory breakfast, inflammatory lunch, inflammatory supper, what are you doing? You're just feeding and feeding and feeding that inflammation. I'm telling you, that inflammation is going to come back to you, and disaster is going to be the result of that. Notice this study. This is a journal Nutrients. Consumption of meat and other animal products is strongly linked to several types of cancer. And now you know why. The answer starts with an I. What's the answer? Inflammation. 
the association between animal product consumption and cancer was as strong as that linking tobacco and cancer. We know tobacco smoke causes cancer. We know consuming animal products causes cancer because both of them feed chronic inflammation. You're eating that arachidonic acid, remember? And you start triggering that disease. Sadly, uh, 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 Switzerland happened to be a country that has very high rates of cancer. And you can see because of the things that the people of Switzerland eat, high consumption of those inflammatory foods. And today, those crazy keto ideas, have you heard about them? You know, those high protein diets and so forth, those things are dangerous because they are excessively inflammatory. Sure, you lose weight, but all the negative consequences of this is tremendous. Instead, you need to learn about the zombie cells. We don't have time to talk about that very much. Maybe tomorrow we can deal a little bit more with that. Zombie cells are like this. You have a, fr uh, a, bull, uh, a bowl full of fruit. And then what happens when one of those fruits goes bad? If you don't remove that fruit, what happens? It's going to spoil the whole thing, yes or no? Same thing happens in your body. When you create inflammation in your body, you create what are called zombie cells. They're cells that are supposed to die, but they don't want to die. And they are like a rotten fruit. And if you don't get rid of them, they start affecting the other cells, and the other cells start becoming zombie cells, and it's like a domino effect. That's what causes a lot of the cases of uh, dementia. That's what causes a lot of the cases of frailty, you know, people that age and, 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 and you know, they, 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 they can fall and break a bone, something very easy because of their weakness and so forth. Those things happen because of those zombie cells. And uh, alcohol, we could talk a lot about alcohol, but alcohol is also tremendously inflammatory. Notice this one. Somebody smokes a cigarette, one cigarette triggers inflammation for a long time. Now, some people may say, doctor, I don't smoke. Well, congratulations that you don't smoke. I hope you don't do this. Eating one kilogram of char-grilled steak is equivalent to smoking 600 cigarettes. Tremendously inflammatory to consume those types of things. Now, if you put a potato there, if you put a carrot there, it's no problem. Those foods are loaded with anti-inflammatory substances that are able to buffer the damage that the heat is causing. Alzheimer's disease, we know the reason why Alzheimer's happens is chronic inflammation long-term. That's why it's dangerous to have that long-term chronic inflammation. So, if you see the reasons why people are dying, you can trace back to issues of habit. So in closing, um, is like a polar bear. If you go up to Svarbald, up in Norway, close to the North Pole, you're going to find the, the polar bear there. And you may be freezing there, but the polar bear is having a great time. Woo! So the weather is great today, they say. Now, what if you say, oh, poor polar bear, it's too cold there. I know of a desert in Africa. I'm going to bring the polar bear to Africa. <laughs> you think the polar bear is going to be happy? <laughs> You're going to kill that polar bear. So this is the problem that we are facing today. You are exposing yourself, you are eating things that you are not designed to eat. Like the polar bear in the desert. All those packaged foods, all those high animal product consumption and so forth, all those refined things like juices and all those things 
they remove that protection of those anti-inflammatories and it is dangerous to eat these things because of how inflammatory these things are. And the sad thing is that as we see with the passing of the years, what is the population in the world eating more animal products, more refined foods, and so forth, instead of increasing the anti-inflammatory things, it seems we're going against that, and we are going to get ourselves in trouble because the bill is going to arrive sooner or later. So the sooner you can stop that inflammation, the better it's going to be for your health. So here's the question of tonight. Is inflammation your friend or your enemy? What's the answer? Depends. As I told you, you need certain level of inflammation to function. But too much inflammation, chronic inflammation, that's the worst of the worst that you need to avoid. Instead, you need to go to the farmer's market. And you need to fill your plate with fruits, vegetables, legumes are one of the best foods you can eat. You need to be eating two or three servings of legumes a day. Legumes are those foods such as beans, lentils, chickpeas, peas, and so forth. They're cheap, you know, and they are power-packed with nutrition as well as nuts, and the principle is spices that are not spicy. What happens if, too, if they are too spicy? You're going to create irritation, and if you trigger irritation, what do you cause? Inflammation. So watch out. One spice that you do need to be using on a regular basis is turmeric. Turmeric is one of the most anti-inflammatory substances in the vegetable world. So after once or twice a week, you should be cooking something with turmeric because of its anti-inflammatory properties. So how are you going to look as you age? Do you want to look sickly with multiple chronic diseases or do you want to have a healthy aging process? See, those things, a lot of that is going to depend on what's under those roots. The choices that we are taking are either triggering that chronic inflammation or they are stopping those process of disease that are destroying our body. So the battle is there between the things that cause chronic inflammation, between the things that stop chronic inflammation. Which one are you going to let win in your life? You're going to let the chronic inflammation destroy your health and shorten your years? Or are you going to choose health? And to me, it's so interesting that in the very first book of the Bible, in the very first chapter of the Bible, we find the recipe there. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth, and every tree that has fruit with seed in it, there will be your what? your anti-inflammatory foods. So, from the beginning it was there. It's been there for thousands of years, and we have a powerful message that can help extinguish those fires of inflammation. We need, step number one, to start living it ourselves. And number two, we should share this powerful message of healing 
and restoration to the people around us. May God bless you. May you have a good night. And uh, we'll continue tomorrow. Don't come by yourself. Bring your neighbors. You know, tell your neighbors to come tomorrow as we continue to learn how to have that good quality life that God wants to grant us. Thank you so much.